Hey guys, it's May May, and today I'm playing with shrink film and stamps because I had an idea and I wanted to try it, so I'm going to bring you along. For today's video, I'm going to be showing you the silver and gold, the metallic, because I think that'll be super cute for what we're going to make. But I wanted to show you we also carry the white and we also carry the super sanded. This one will go through your printer and this one is made so you can stamp on it. It has a little tooth to it. So those are also available. But today we're going to be doing silver and gold. Okay, I have an idea. So let me bring over a piece. Let me just bring over one piece at a time. So what I'm gonna do is, so this is like a slick surface, right? Which means it's gonna, when I go to stamp it, it'll kind of wiggle if I'm not careful. I'm going to tape this down to my work surface because I want it to stay. And, and then I'm going to use a stamp positioner to help me keep the wiggle off. We're gonna keep the wiggles at bay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just tape the top here. I'm not, I'm not too worried about where I'm putting the tape because I'm gonna be stamping. I can stamp wherever I have available. And I'm gonna be using punches for this. So we're gonna make jewelry. I did not tell y'all, we're making jewelry. Look, I have two sheets laying here. Let me get one out. Didn't mean to do that. So there's that one. And then I'm gonna put this one off to the side a little bit. Now I wanna stamp in this corner and I'm gonna be using some stays on. So I wanna protect my work surface. So I'm just gonna slide this under like this. So if I roll off anywhere, I'm still covered. Let's put that under there too. So the stamp set we're gonna be using is the one called Layered Leopard. And I'm only gonna use this right here. Now Layered Leopard is so you can stamp this one and then layer this on top and get a two-toned leopard print. I'm just gonna use this one at the top and let the silver be my background and the gold, by the way, because I'm gonna do both. Now I'm gonna use Stays On ink. And the reason for that, Stays On is an ink that is made for non-porous surfaces, because guess what it does? It stays on, and that's what we like about it. It is not made for everyday surfaces, but it is made for non-porous. All right, so I'm going to ink this up really good. Now, I've put this on to this little platform or positioner that has feet, and I will show you what I'm talking about in one second. I'm going to really make sure I am well inked. Now, I will tell you, this probably won't be perfect because I'm stamping liquid onto plastic, but honestly, even if it's kind of a rustic leopard print design, that's not gonna hurt my feelings. So see the little feet here? That keeps it from touching the paper until I'm ready for it to. And by doing this, I can move my hand and then I can press, and you just wanna spend a little time without wiggling, okay? And these little rubber feet keep me from twisting. That's the plan there. That's why I'm using this platform in particular for this. And I'm just going to take more time than I need to do this because once you lift it up, you've lifted it up. And when it stays on, it will stay. So now I'm gonna slowly lift this off without twisting. Look how cool that looks. Looks really cool. All right, I'm gonna continue up and get myself enough um, leopard print to then go in and punch with a couple punch punches. I wanna punch with my two inch circle punch and I want to punch with my two, or I think this is a two inch, two and a quarter inch hexagon punch. So let me finish my leopard and then we'll go to punching. Now I just finished with my stays on and Shannon took my stamp away and she is going to put some squeaky clean on it and clean it. Now the stamp will be stained. No matter what you do, the stays on is going to stain, but we're going to clean the ink off of it for now and go ahead and do that right away. And if you have a buddy that'll clean your stamps, you are a lucky, lucky person. <laughs> so I am very, very blessed. Okay, so I'm going to peel this away and just look how gorgeous this, I mean, that's just gorgeous. Let me show you what we did. We wanted to make sure we had enough stamped. So I reached into Ben and pulled out some scrap vellum and I just made sure I could get two at the top and then also we um, punched this one so we could make sure we could get two circles. So I hopefully can get both of these out of this. So I'm gonna put this one aside and go to the silver because it's been drying longer. Now I want to test it. Where's that scrap here? I wanna make sure it's dry and I'll just show you what I'm gonna do to do that. It may not be because this is a very you know slick surface. I'm gonna lay this down and just kind of run over and make sure I don't have any loose spots. None there. So we're good there. Let's check this section. Nope, I just like to check because I don't want to put my hand in it. Nope, we're good. All right, now for the fun part. Let me cut this out because I want to be able to get to all the corners. So I'm going to use my scissors. You could put this in your trimmer, but I'm just going to go, ooh, I've got stuff all over my scissors. Hang on a second. Okay, I'm just going to cut this out 
right to the leopard. So when I punch, it'll be right where I need it to be. That's so cool. Look at that, that is so pretty. All right, so I'm gonna punch two circles and two hexagons. So I wanna stay as low as I can and use as little of the paper as I can so I make sure I can get them both in. There's one. Woo, flew across at me. Look how cool that is. So cute. All right, let's get a second one. By the way, you can do this with dies. If you have, um, if you wanna make bigger earrings than we're gonna make, you could do this with dies and do the same thing. All right, let's get our hexagons. Big old Shannon earrings. Big Shannon earrings, yeah. These are gonna be a little dainty for you. Maybe not, I don't really know how they're gonna turn out. What does it say it shrinks down to 80%? She's gonna read the uh, package for us. to 20% of its original size. So it shrinks 80% down. So it's gonna shrink a lot and we'll see how it turns out. All right, let's punch the ones out of our gold. Okay, because this is going to shrink 80% of its size, it's gonna leave us 20%. It's gonna shrink way down, guys. It's gonna be small, okay? So I'm gonna use a one and three fourths punch for the top part of my earring because these earrings are gonna hang. They're gonna kind of dangle. So I've got four gold and four silver. So what I'm gonna do is punch four of these. So I'm gonna punch four gold and then four silver. And then if you wanna do, if you wanna mix your metals and do one earring that's silver and gold, you can do that or whatever you want to do then. But let me get all of our little circles punched and then we're going to the oven. Okay, so now that we have all of these punched, it's time to put the holes in here for our jump rings. Now you may hear Shannon in the background, she's getting our oven ready for us to go into, but I wanted to show you how I'm gonna do this. So this is the same size as this one, and this is the same size as this one. These are just scrap paper from Ben that I punched with the same punch, and I did the same here. Now I'm gonna need to put a hole at the bottom of both of these and at the top of both of these. So here's what I'm gonna do. I wanna find my center. So I'm gonna take my little template, my scrap paper template, and do this, and this won't be perfect, but it won't be the worst, okay? Then, I think what I'm gonna do is use my bigger hole. I'm not sure if I wanna use this one. Yeah, that's gonna shrink really low. I'm gonna go over here to my one-fourth hole to be safe, okay? And I'm going to use this piece that I did with that fold, and I'm gonna let that be my guide for lining it up. And the reason I wanted to do it on paper first is because if I don't like it, I can do it again. Let's just see where that works out. Oh, that's pretty good. That's gonna be in a good spot. You don't want it to be too high up because you wanna be able to use your jump ring, but if you do it too low, it'll be super skinny, okay? So I like that one, and now let's do the same here. I may even make myself a mark after I do this this time because I just kind of floated that in there. So what I may do is take a pencil and just kind of call this the center, and then I'll feel a little more confident. Let's see what that looks like. That's not bad, we'll see how it works. So there's that one, and now I just need to do this guy. Do I want it to hang, I want it to hang that way. Okay, so we'll do points. If y'all don't think these are gonna be easy presents, this is gonna be good for presents, isn't it? I think so. Well, especially since you can do it like in a, um, a, a, a line. Like a, assembly, like, line. assembly line. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say a conveyor belt. A conveyor like, belt, same thing. Yeah, these are gonna be great presents. And think how many you can get from a sheet. I will tell you from experience, you want to punch your holes before you bake. I learned this when I was working with the kids at church and we were making keychains for moms or dads, one or the other, and we learned to definitely make our holes before we bake. Okay, so now I'm gonna line this template up and I'm gonna put these into my punch and then I'm going to punch through them. I'm trying to punch through four at a time. This may be crazy, it might not work. It worked like a dream. So I did all four of those at one time. So I'm gonna separate them. Back again, there we go. And then I'm gonna do these and those. Okay, we're getting there. We got all our holes punched. That's all we needed to do. If you were going to like dangle several of these, you'd wanna put a hole at the top and the bottom. Now, Shannon has made us out. Our little toaster oven does not have a tray in it. I lost the tray somewhere. So here's what we do. We laid these on some aluminum foil. 
And these, we cook these in our little toaster oven and I'll take the camera over and get some footage of that. Um, but you can totally do this in your own oven and there's instructions. We did it in our oven at church. It's not a big deal. The kids love this. Now, one thing I will caution you on, sometimes there can be a breeze in your oven, okay? And when you go to shrink these, they're gonna curl up on themselves. You need to give yourself some space. I could be making these too tight. I don't think I am. I could be, but my oven's gonna, only gonna hold so many at a time, so we're gonna have to do a couple of shrinks. Since we are, I think I'm gonna take these big ones off, just these two, and give us a little room to ease up a little bit, and then we might add another little, the small ones over here. And I'm gonna have to do two, like I said, no big deal. All right, so let's head to the oven. Okay, so these have come out of the oven and I have a couple of things to caution you on. One, I could not get footage in our toaster oven. It is just too tiny and I can't get the camera to clear up on it. But what you wanna do is watch them shrink. And once they get flat, okay, the minute they are flat, take them out. And then what I did was I put them on the counter with another piece of foil on top and sat a book on. But here's what you don't wanna do. Don't squish. See this one? I distorted it. <laughs> I pushed on it and that made it go a little weird. I really don't mind. I, I mean, I think it looks okay. Kind of if it was clay, it could look like that. So I'm going to keep going and see how it looks. So don't, don't push too much. Also, something else I want to caution you on. I put these in at different times. I think I would put all of these circles in at the same time all of these circles in and then all these hexagons because the temperature in the oven changes with the opening and closing of the door. And so some of these shrunk a little quicker than the others did. So just to be more consistent, just put all the same shapes in at the same time and you'll get a, a more consistent outgo. Again, I'm not stressed about it. I think it's gonna be cute. All right, let's attach. So let's make a pair. The question is, do I wanna have gold and silver mixed in? Nope, I wanna do gold. I wanna, I'm want i a color on top of color person, so I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna pick my two smaller of these, which are these guys, and slide those over. So this will be a pair of earrings for me. And remember I told you if you wanted to like stack, if you wanted to have these three long, which would be super cute, you just put double holes in the middle ones and then single holes at the bottom. All right, let's grab a couple of jump rings, and these are gonna be hard for you to see because I'm using the black ones. I love these black jump rings. And here's the trick with a jump ring, okay? You never pull a jump ring open. You twist open a jump ring, all right? So I'm gonna grab it on one side of the slice in the middle. There's a little slice in that middle, okay? And then this is not the tool to use. You actually wanna use another one of these, but only have one with me. So what you do is take your other tool, not these because these are snips, so you don't wanna do this, but I'm gonna show you. And you wanna twist it open. Now let me show you what I did. You see how I twisted that? I did not pull it open. When you pull it apart, you take a chance of separating those um, tongs and not getting them back where they need to go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this guy on here, like so. And then I'm gonna see if I can get this guy to go right on. Oh, I dropped my jump ring out. The whole thing dropped. Let's try it again. Let's grab you like that. I need to hold firmer. I was gonna say, where did that guy go? All right, let's put him back on. Make sure I'm in the camera so you can see. Drop that guy down like that. And then this guy on like this, okay? Then we're going to twist it back together. We're not gonna be pulling. We didn't pull it apart, remember? So we're gonna twist this back together. Just a smooth twist, just like that. And when you do, your little jump ring will line up Sometimes I squeeze it like that to be sure, but your little jump ring rings will line back up in their circle, okay? So let me show you what you get. Look, it's cute. Now I did something that I went a little too deep on my holes. I should have gone a little thinner because see how they're touching each other? It does not bother me. But if you want them to be separate, don't give yourself quite as much space as I did to make the holes. But this is the first time we've done it, so we're all just kind of learning. So there's one, let's do the other one. Also, if you have bigger jump rings, these are the biggest I have right now, and a bigger jump ring would keep them from touching as well. So you, there's all kinds of way to do this. But jewelry can be rustic, it can be perfect, it can be whatever you want. There's the second one. Those are cute. I actually kind of like it overlapping because it lifts that bottom one. They're very cute. Cute. All right, I'm going to connect the rest of these. 
Okay, so now I'm going to be using some of these flat back earring backs and some E6000 right here. And all I'm doing is on my work service, I'm turning these guys upside down. And I'm going to put the little backs on them and let them dry completely just sitting here, okay? But here's a tip. With E6000, once you squeeze it, it kind of wants to feed. So I gave it the tiniest little squeeze to get it started. And notice I've got it sitting over a little scrap piece of paper. What I'm going to do is just touch that little bead that's fallen out. And then I'm going to smash down into it on the other side. Let me just rub that onto the paper. So I'm going to keep that there. I'm going to touch that E6000 and then smash it so it covers the whole back. And it's got little threads just like a hot glue gun. And then I'm going to stick that onto the back of my earring. And then I'm just going to leave it to sit. And the longer, you, you know, if you can let them sit overnight, that's good because E6000 takes a while to dry. And in a perfect world, you'd kind of do this in the uh, marrying style where you would put the E6000 onto the earring first and let it sit there for a minute, put it onto the back as well, and then kind of marry it together like rubber cement. But I'm not doing that. I'm just going to let it sit here and dry. And then when those are dry, we'll come back and show you what our finished earrings look like. You guys, here they are, all complete with their little backs glued on the back. And you might notice there's only three pair here because I'm wearing a pair because I think they're so cute. And they weigh nothing. And I just think they are so stinking adorable. Now, I filmed these before I did this next thing. I, on Thursday of last week, did a live show, which is actually today when I'm filming this. <laughs> And I'm going to be using the monogram stamp and seeing if I can't make little monogram kind of little stud type earrings. So if you want to see that video, I'll make sure to link it in the description. I don't know how it turned out because we hadn't done it yet. We're going to do it live in just a few minutes. But I wanted to show you these before I tried that. I'm in love with these. And I think, imagine doing this with like floral pattern on the bottom or geometric and not just cheated. They're so cute. They weigh nothing. The girls here are loving them. They cannot wait to get a pair of them. So I hope you guys like them as much as I do. If you make some of these, share them with us over on our customer gallery. We love to see what you guys are making and I cannot wait to see. By the way, I'm wearing the silver version of these because I think they're so cute. Cannot wait to see what you guys do. You can also share it with us over on Discord. But listen, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You never know what kind of video is coming out. So subscribe so you can be sure to be notified. And the best way to get notified, click that little bell. That gives us the best shot. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. And until next time, bye now.